In the last video, we talked about the SIR model as a model of market penetration. Here we're going to talk about the same model as a model of the spread of disease. And that's in fact where the SIR model came from. We've got some sort of an epidemic. Lots of school kids are getting measles or something. And we want to understand how the epidemic is going to go. So we divide the people out there into three classes. They're the susceptibles. These are the people who aren't sick, but might become sick. The infecteds, these are the people who are sick, and the recovereds. And the recovereds can't become sick again because now they have immunity. So S is for susceptible, I is for infected, R is for recovered, which actually makes sense. So infected people recover after a certain amount of time. Measles tends to run for about two weeks. So roughly a quarter of the people who have measles are on their last day and are about to recover, a 14th. So the rate at which people recover is proportional to how many are sick with a proportionality con constant called the recovery coefficient, which is one over the average amount of time that you spend being sick. For the flu, the flu lasts about a week, so B is a seventh and T is seven. Measles lasts around two weeks, so B is a fourteenth and T is fourteen. Then we have transmission, susceptible people becoming infected. Well, what causes a susceptible person to become infected? Well, it happens when an infected person sneezes on a susceptible person. Well, that's proportional to the number of people who are sneezing, and it's also proportional to the number of people who are being sneezed on. So it's proportional to S times I. So transmission is a constant call, called the transmission coefficient times S times I. And we wind up with the exact same equations as we had before. S decreases at a rate of ASI. I increases at a rate ASI minus, the, that's the people who get sick, minus the number of people who recover and R increases at the rate at which people recover. We have slightly different names. Instead of having, A is still the transmission coefficient, but B, instead of being an attrition coefficient, is a recovery coefficient. And as before, it's one over the average amount of time that you spend in state I. Here, state I means you're infected. Before, state I meant that you were a user of the product. So what's the difference? The difference is in our goals. If you're doing business, you want I to be as big as possible. Those are your users. And you do that by getting A to be as big as possible. You, transmission is good. You want all of your users to tell their friends. And you want B to be as small as possible because once somebody is using your, your, your product, you don't want them to leave. And you'd like S to be as big as possible so you have lots of potential customers. If you're doing this for public health, it's the same model, only now you want I small. I is the number of infected people. You don't want an epidemic. And that means you want A small. You want to have a little transmission as possible. So you tell people to wash their hands, to cover their mouths when they sneeze, use hand sanitizer, stay home when they're sick, whatever. And B, you'd like that to be big so that people get well soon. And you'd like the pool of potentially sick people to be as small as possible. So same equations, but different goals and different policy implications.